Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about integration of radar pulses. It is one of the important topics in the radar systems in the pulse radar. When we are transmitting a signal like this, when we are transmitting a signal, so a signal is nothing but a main lobe. When we are transmitting a main lobe like this, targets may be located at different different places. So let us consider three different targets like A, B and C. The same lobe may touch this target A at this particular point and at maximum peak it may touch at this point and somewhere around here the target C will be touching here. When we are receiving the signals back towards the radar system, we will get the received echo pulse because of the target A, because of target B and as well as because of the target C. But with the different echo pulses, with the different echo strength signals. Now, yes, there are three different targets. We have received three different echo pulses, but how we can estimate which one target is, well, which target is belonging to at which uh, target. Okay, which pulse is belonging to which target. So first, as we are receiving more than one pulse, first and foremost thing, we need to integrate all the signals. Integrate all the signals so that it improves the accuracy of the radar system. Okay, so the process of summing all the received signals is nothing but integration. Summing all received pulses is nothing but integration okay generally we know the basic definition basic meaning of integration integration is nothing but summing of summing of all the information so here summing of all the received summing of all received pulses so as we are transmitting a single pulse we will receive number of echo pulses because of the number of targets so what we need to do we need to integrate all these together okay suppose let us consider one search beam radar is one search radar is there that is used to search the target in one particular location okay suppose one radar antenna is there this antenna is continuously searching for the targets okay in this particular area this is the area in which the target is in which the radar system is continuously searching for targets this is the angle at which the target antenna is covering okay then suppose if any target is presence over in that particular uh, range how many hits that a beam can touch this target that is given by number of hits per scan number of hits per scan that is indicated by n b is equal to theta b f p by theta s dot theta s dot is nothing but rate of change of scanning so the n b number of hits per scan number of hits how many pulses that touches this target in a particular vicinity of the radar antenna that is given by number of hits per scan n b is equal to theta b by f theta b f p by theta s so where theta b is nothing but what is theta b theta b is nothing but beam width beam width because because of the beam width only the number of targets can be covered suppose see here this is the beam width so how we can uh, tell the beam width of any way any beam of power points the angle between two of power points it is nothing but theta b so because of this theta b only it covers the number of targets and it touches so theta b is nothing but b width and fp is nothing but pulse repetition frequency pulse repetition frequency so how we can define the pulse repetition frequency the frequency at which the number of pulses are getting repeated suppose we are transmitting a pulse like this okay so from here to here we can call it as a time period tp or 1 by fp so it is the fp so pulse repetition frequency the frequency at which the pulses are being repeated so theta s is nothing but scanning rate scanning rate scanning rate as it is continuously changing with respect to time it is indicated by theta s dot dot indicates here rate of change 
okay so here the number of hits per scan in a particular uh, radar vicinity is nothing but nb is equal to theta bfp by theta s okay suppose consider there are n number of pulses we are receiving n number of pulses are there okay consider there are n number of pulses so n, when we are transmitting a single pulse there are n number of uh, pulses are being reflected back towards the radar system then when we integrate all these signals or all these pulses then the resultant signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio for n number of pulses is equal to n times signal to noise ratio of each pulse okay hope you understand when n number of pulses are received the total signal to noise ratio of all the signals group grouping for n number of pulses so signal to noise ratio of n number of pulses is equal to n into how many pulses are there that many n into signal to noise ratio of each pulse okay now let us see I am saying integration should be there when, uh, when n number of pulses are received by the radar system integration should be there but how to integrate and where to integrate where to integrate the main focus here it is where we need to perform this integration in the receiver of any radar system consider the block diagram what we have studied in the first pulse radar Cons I, am, I am taking the same block diagram so this is the transmitting section you already know it this is the transmitting section and this complete bottom part is nothing but receiving section once the signal is received whether it may be one pulse or n number of pulses may be received after passing through these many stages after passing through if amplifier one thing we can perform the integration before this second detector or we can also perform this integration after second detector that means there are two places that we can perform the integration one is before integration before second detector and after uh, or after second detector so we can perform integration we can perform integration before or after second detector before or after second detector so if the integration is performed before second detector if the integration is performed before second detector it is known as it is known as pre-detection integration pre-detection integration pre-detection integration or also known as coherent integration coherent integration okay so the main name is coherent integration as we are performing it before the second detector it is also known as pre-detection before detection before removal of the carrier signal only we are performing the integration that's why it is before pre-detection integration okay the pre-detection integration consists of all the information related to phase but after uh, uh, detection the information related to phase has been lost and that type of uh, integration is known as post detection integration or non coherent integration so if the same integration if the integration is performed after second detector after second detector that type of integration is known as what it is called as post detection so after detection we are performing it so post detection integration or we can also call it as 
non coherent non coherent integration okay how these names see here in the pre detection integration i told you phase information is preserved because the carrier is there because before detection only before second detection only we are performing this integration so phase information should be there carrier is there so phase information should be there that's why it is coherent it is coherent integration but in the post detection integration we are performing this after after detection so we have removed the carrier signal there is no phase information that's why it is non coherent integration that's why it is non coherent integration okay so there there are there's a uh, there are two types of integration techniques available one is coherent integration coherent integration or pre detection integration and second one is non coherent non coherent integration okay this is pre and this is post detection integration okay now let us see just the differences between these two coherent integration and non coherent integration because in short answer questions you may get this type of questions what is the difference between coherent integration and non coherent integration i already told you coherent integration is nothing but pre detection integration and non coherent integration is post detection integration coming to second one as yes, we are performing this task before the second detector it preserves the phase information so that's why phase information of echo signal or received echo signal is preserved detector destroys the phase information less efficient than pre detection because we don't have any phase information okay suppose n number of pulses we are receiving then the overall integration snr will be snr total signal to noise ratio for n number of pulses is equal to n times of signal to noise ratio for single pulse this is for coherent integration suppose the same is done after second detector then signal to noise ratio of n number of pulses of integration is less than n times the signal to noise ratio of individual pulses okay because we are losing some information we are using some information that's why it is known as signal to noise ratio it is uh, the is the overall integration snr of n is less than signal to noise ratio of uh, n number of uh, n times signal to noise ratio of individual pulses so difficult to implement and easy to implement uh, coming to how this now how this phase information how this coherent integration and non coherent integration affects the overall broader range equation or max so now we are uh, we are going to introduce one more parameter that is integration efficiency so integration efficiency integration efficiency ei of n is defined as signal to noise ratio of one pulse to the n times signal to noise ratio of integrated snr okay so this is the integration efficiency it is defined as the ratio of signal to noise ratio of individual pulse divided by n times the signal to noise ratio of integrated snr okay so now we can write this same equation as snr for n pulses is equal to snr for single pulse divided by n times integration efficiency okay and we know the maximum radar range equation see every time we are keep on changing the maximum radar range equation formula so what is the latest equation we have got that we should consider here in the receiver noise after adding the noise figure the equation is r max is equal to pt g sigma ae by 4 pi square yes mean here so yes mean has been converted into k t not b n f n s by n out here okay so that out should be 
change it to n because for n number of pulses the integrated SNR now it becomes s by n of n okay whole power 1 by 4 is equal to ptg sigma ae by substitute this s by n from this okay so divided by 4 pi square kt naught bn fn s by n of n so this is equal to snr s by n of 1 into n times e i of n whole power 1 by 4 so this is the maximum radar range equation for n number of pulses to be integrated okay so what you have understood from these notations is every time the maximum radar range equation is keep on upgrading itself okay first there was no noise component later noise component has been added and there was no uh, efficiency related to the number of pulses we are receiving that also been added so every time we are keep on changing the maximum radar range equation to get accurate value of the maximum distance that the target is located okay Thank you.